Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-Kareem. Amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani ar-Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif la mim. Ahasib al-Nas wa in yutraku wa in yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Wa laqad fatanna al-lazina min qablihim. Fala ya'lamanna allahu al-lazina sadaqu wa la ya'lamanna al-kadhi. وقال الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Honorable Ulama, Honorable Mashaykh, my dear brothers and elders I begin in the name of Allah and thank Him and praise Him and glorify Him. I seek His forgiveness and I ask Allah to send His infinite mercy upon His beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to guide us all to the right path so that we can all live like Muslims, die like Muslims and rise like Muslims on the day of Qiyamah. My dear brothers, it's never been easy to be a good Muslim. It's never been easy before, it's not easy now and it never will be. Allah says in the Quran, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ وَإِنْ يُتْرَكُوا وَإِنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do the people think that they can claim to be believers and they will not be tested? Allah has tested the people before us and Allah will continue testing people so that He can distinguish between those who are truthful and those who are merely claimants. Those who are truthful and those who are liars. And so test and fitan and problems, they are all part and parcel of life. In one hadith reported by Imam Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been reported to have said, "لا يأتي عليكم عام ولا يوم إلا والذي بعده شر منه حتى تلقوا ربكم." Each day and each week will bring more and more evil and problems. We think now times are difficult, but tomorrow they will get worse. Each year and each week. Each day brings a new test for us, a new problem. Children, young people who've gone to schools, most of us or most of you have done, probably done maths. Uh, and in mathematical lessons, students learn to draw graphs. And usually they are straight line graphs. You have x-axis and then the y-axis uh, the y and the x-axis. And you have a graph, usually y equals mx plus c which is a straight line graph going up. But if we were to draw a graph of goodness against time, goodness on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, and the graph will come continuously down. This We are now at the lowest point of taqwa, piety, goodness, devotion to Allah uh, than this ummah has ever been. And the graph is continuously going down. Muslims at large, and especially the youth, face a number of challenges. Different problems, different challenges in society, education, employment, young people looking for, for partners in their lives, parents bringing up their children in, a, in, in, in challenging and difficult conditions. These are all different tests. But one problem especially the Muslim youth are facing in modern and changing times is the fact when they look around they see so many different groups so many different sects different religions in the world and many many become confused as to what is the right path everybody claims to follow the right path and everybody and all groups try and make their claim based on Quran and Hadith our aqeedah is in the Quran whatever we say is in Hadith and everybody from Shias, Qadianis and various other different groups they all try and justify their beliefs and practices from the Quran and Hadith my learned Shaykh, my learned teacher, Hazrat Allama Sahib, Dhamad Barakatuh, may Allah bless him, Amen. may Allah extend his life, Amen. may Allah give more barakah in his health and life and all aspects of his life, Amen. may Allah enable the Ummah as a whole to benefit from what Allah has blessed him with. Hazrat often says, 
Huh, that it's not a matter of Quran and Hadith, it's a matter of Quran and Sunnah. Huh, that clearly distinguishes and makes a difference uh, between Sunnah and Hadith. The Prophet وسلم, in one famous Hadith has also prophesied that there will come a time when this Ummah will become divided into 73 sects. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya'ti ala ummati kama ata ala bani Israel hadhwan na'le bin na'l. Just as one shoe is a total reflection and opposite to the other shoe, this ummah will follow in the footsteps and is a reflection of Bani Israel. They were divided into 72 sects. This ummah will become divided into 73 sects. And the Sahaba inquired, Ya Rasulullah, what is the solution? And the, 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 the Prophet said, Kullum finnari illa millatan wahida. They are all destined to Jahannam except one. And Sahaba inquired, Ya Rasulullah, which is that fortunate and saved group and the saved sect? And the Prophet said, Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi. Those who follow my path and the path of my, of my companions. To follow the right path. This is a struggle which we all face. This is a challenge which we all face. This is a challenge which our, especially the youth face today. To follow and to acquire an understanding of the right path. sirat mustaqim Whatever we have is from Allah. Whatever we need we should ask Allah. In the Quran there is one surah which we recite most frequently. After our Iman, the most important obligation and duty upon a Muslim is prayer. On the day of Qiyamah, the first thing which shall be questioned about is the prayer. In prayer, there are 17 rakats which are obligatory every day, 3 rakats wajib, 12 rakats sunnat e So 17 and 3 is 20 plus 12 is? 32. All of you went to school, yeah? Do you go to school? <laughs> Uh, this is basic, not even primary, reception mathematics, you know, maths. Uh, 17 plus 3 plus 12 is? 32. 32 times a day we ask Allah, اِهْدِدَ السِّرَاطُ mustaqim. Ya Allah, guide us all to the right path. If there are 365 days in the year, which there are in the solar year, you multiply 365 by 32 comes to 11,680. In one year, somebody who prays Salat five times a day, every Muslim doesn't read the whole Quran every day. But a decent Muslim tries to pray five times a day. And in their prayer, they pray 17 rakat faraz, 3 rakat witr, which is wajib, and 12 rakat sunnat muakkida. Any nawafil is additional on top. So in one year, that makes 11,680 rakats. And in every rakat, we recite Fatiha. That is when people pray on their own. Uh, in Muatta Imam Malik, which is the first book about which it was mentioned, Imam Shafi, rahmahullah, one of the greatest scholars in this ummah, he's mentioned, Asahul Kutubi Bada Kitabillah Muatta. That long before even Imam Bukhari was born, Imam Bukhari was born in 194 after Hijrah, Imam Malik, rahmahullah, was born in the 95th year after Hijrah. And he compiled a book, he called it Muatta, because after he compiled it, it was presented to the ulama of the time. Bukhari, very honorable, very respectful, very, very sound book. But this is Imam Bukhari's personal uh, selection, compilation. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, when he compiled his compilation, then he presented his work to the ulama muhaddisun of the time for approval and they were all very happy at what Imam Malik, rahimahullah, has compiled. And in there he brought a narration from Jabir, radiallahu anhu, who was the mufti of Medina for almost 60 years in the presence of many prominent sahaba. And Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala in, in there he mentions a narration from uh, that Man salla rakatan wa lam yusalli fiha bi ummi al-Qur'an fa lam yusalli illa wa ra'a al-Imam Whosoever prays even one rakat and in that rakat he doesn't pray Fatiha he has not prayed uh, except behind the Imam So when you pray behind the Imam Man kana lahu imamun fa qira'atu al-Imam lahu qira'a then the recitation of the Imam is sufficient. He is praying on your behalf. 
Uh, but nevertheless, whether you pray individually, then you'll recite it yourself. If you pray behind the Imam, the Imam will recite it on your behalf. Whether it be Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib or Isha, whether it be Juma Salat, whether it be Eid Salat, whether it be Tarawi Salat, Imam recites it on your behalf. So he's asking Allah, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Ya Allah, guide us all to the right path. Guide us all to the right path. Guide us all to the right path. 11,000 plus times a year. And if a person prays for 10 years, in 10 years it makes 100,000 times plus. 100,000 plus. <coughs> and if a person, if a person continues to pray, for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, Allahu Akbar, can you imagine if a person was to pray for 50 years, started praying at the age of 10 till the age of 60, that's a half a million times he would have recited that dua. <laughs> Allah could have asked us to recite something else as well. Uh, but Surah Fatiha is such an important surah. The lesson in that surah acknowledgement of Allah's greatness, His glory, His mercy, His, His divinity. His Majesty, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. Acknowledgement of Allah's Tawheed, acknowledgement of Allah's majesty and greatness, supremacy. And then to ask Allah to guide us to the right path. Ya Allah, guide us to the right path. Guide us to the right path. Whether young or old, rich or poor, knowledgeable and simple person, everybody needs to ask Allah for Hidayat. So many hundreds of thousands of times throughout our lives. And for this hidayat, Allah sent the Quran. kitabu la rayba fihi hudallil muttaqeen. Allah sent the book in which there is no doubt. Dhalikal kitabu in Arabic means this is the book. And not this is a book. This is the book in which there is no doubt whatsoever. Other books. Imam Bukhari Rahmahullah's work compilation, very noble, very honorable, book of hadith. But compiled by a man. People say, well, Imam Abu Hanifa was a man. He's not Rasulullah. He could have made a mistake. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, but just as Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmahullah, he was a man. So was Imam Bukhari. So were the other imams, so were the other imams, so was Ibn Taymiyyah rahmahullah, so was Bin Baz and Shaykh al-Bani. Why only make reference to Imam Abu Hanifa rahmahullah? So the Quran says, kitabula fi. This is the book in which there is no doubt, Hudallil muttaqeen. It guides the people of taqwa to the right path. Allah gave this code of life. Allah didn't just send Jibreel to hang the Quran on the Kaaba. And announce in the world, oh, you people come and take the Quran and listen to it and abide by it. And one of the fitans which people face now, and one of the problems, and one of the misguidance of modern times, and one which was prophesied by Rasulullah himself specifically. There will come a time people will say only the Quran is enough for us. We don't need anything else. We don't need hadith. We don't need sunnah. We don't need imams, we don't need anybody, just the Quran is sufficient. The Prophet ﷺ prophesied there will come a time a man who would have eaten to his fill and sit back on his sofa and whatever and relax and say when something is presented to him from my saying he will say ah, yes that's the book of Allah is sufficient for us. Allah did not reveal Quran upon anybody other than Muhammad ﷺ. Allah could have just Revealed the Quran on the Kaaba through Jibreel and have it announced for people to come and take it and just interpret it and read it as they desire. But Allah didn't. Allah sent Quran upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah sent Torah. Allah gave Torah to Musa alayhi salam. Allah sent Zabur. Allah gave it to Dawood alayhi salam. Allah sent Injil with Isa alayhi salam. Allah sent Quran with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So just as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought Quran and presented Quran, and the meaning and the practical implementation of the Quran will also need to be taken from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Allah sent the Prophet ﷺ with the Quran and Allah gave him guidance, total guidance and put him in charge and on the, on, on the path of right guidance. Yaseen wal Quran al-Hakim inna ka lamin al-mursaleen ala siratim mustaqeem who is the who is ahead on siratim mustaqeem Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, so the path of hidayat the path of guidance sent by Allah and the path which we all pray for hundreds of thousands of times throughout our lives is contained in the Quran and in obedience to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught deen to his companions and this ummah has been continuously developing, spreading, flowing across 14, 14 centuries. Ahead of this, the whole, the whole the whole mission, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Behind the Prophet, Sahaba. Behind the Sahaba, Tabi'een. Then, Aimma Mujtahideen. And then all the other Salaf Salihin. And we are 1400 years down the line. How many of you go shopping to Sainsbury's or Tesco's for that matter? Put your hands up if you've ever been, if you've ever been shopping. Or if you've ever gone to a bank to deposit some money or take some money out. And if you go there, there's a queue. What do you do? Jump to the front? When people are going to India, Pakistan, somewhere, when they go to Heathrow, they line up in a queue, yeah? To go through the immigration, security, and so on. It's another thing, as soon as you get to Islamabad, there is no, everybody jumps to the front. But, but here, everybody lines up. If you ever try to jump the queue, what do they say? Get to the back. <laughs> I think you must have tried to jump the queue someday. <laughs> uh, they say, go, go to the back. Uh, many people think nowadays, yes, uh, we need to follow just Quran and Sunnah uh, behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We don't need anybody. We don't need Sahaba. We don't need Aimma. We don't need anybody. Just Quran and Sunnah. Uh, like some people, they say, uh, Tarawi is Sunnah, they say, but you can pray 20 as well. Ever heard that? Every Ramadan, most people hear it. Uh, Sunnah is eight, but you can pray 20 as well. Uh, because Rasulullah only prayed eight. As, although Umar radiallahu anhu, he established a practice of 20, but the Sunnah is eight, so we'll pray eight. Uh, what are you trying to say? Hazrat Umar didn't know Sunnah? Hazrat Usman didn't know what is Sunnah? Hazrat Ali didn't know what is Sunnah? And the person who makes the narration of eight rakat, even she didn't speak up to say, Oh, Umar, how dare you make people pray 20 when sunnat is only eight. So when we have a whole continuous chain, this ummah has been flowing for 14 centuries. And people say, we got to follow the Quran and sunnah. We don't say, La ilaha illallah, Umar Rasulullah. Uh, we don't say la ilaha illallah abi hanifa rasulillah yes indeed nobody says that kalima anywhere uh, but the people who knew rasulullah best uh, in fact uh, rasulullah even prayed ya allah give me umar and when umar radiallahu anhu embraced islam jibril came down ya rasulullah are you happy at the islam of umar the prophet said yes i'm very happy jibril alayhi salam said ya rasulullah all the angels are happy at the islam of umar as well the Prophet وسلم, didn't say for nothing if there was to be another Prophet after me, it would be Umar, because he was going to commit so many innovations and bidats in deen. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, fully trusted Umar radiallahu anhu. He fully trusted Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. This is why in his own presence, this is such an honor. No other Sahabi has been given this honor that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is present himself and he appointed somebody else to lead people in salah. There was another instance, one other instance, when the, when the Prophet was in a journey, he went to relieve himself and when he came back, the time for salat was, was going. So Sahaba appointed Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu to lead people in salah. And when the Prophet returned, Sahaba were praying and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam joined the congregation in salah. Uh, but other than that, there was no other occasion 
And when Rasulullah is present himself and he appointed another imam, he would appoint other imams when he himself used to go on expeditions. Like when the Prophet went to Tabuk, he appointed Ali ibn, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu to look after the affairs of his family. He appointed at the same time Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu anhu to be the imam in Masjid al-Nabawi. There were such occasions, but there was never occasion when Rasulullah was present in Medina and he appointed another imam, except in his final few days when the beloved Prophet of Allah was very ill. And for more than three days, the last prayer Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led himself was the Maghrib of Thursday night. And having led the people in Maghrib Salat on Thursday night, the Prophet when he retired to his his hujra of Aisha radiallahu anha, he was unable to come and lead people in salah. And he commanded the people, oh people, muru Abu Bakr and yusalli bin nas, tell Abu Bakr to lead you in salah. And the Isha on Thursday, all the prayers on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Fajr on Monday. In Rasulullah's presence, Rasulullah was there in his hujra, in his blessed hujra. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had the honor of leading the people in salah. So you think if Rasulullah didn't trust Abu Bakr, he would have had him appointed imam. In our communities, if there's a Deobandi community, who do they appoint as an imam? Some Brailwi, some Shia. Who do the Brailwis appoint as their Imam? Some Deobandi? Or were they dead bodies? Or anybody else for that matter? People try and follow. And in fact, many communities, somebody from their own family, somebody from their own brothery, somebody from their own hometown, one of their own kind people want. So you think if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not trust Abu Bakr totally, completely, would he have left the reins of his ummah in his hands, in his presence? Uh, wasn't that enough for people to realize that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's most trusted, reliable companion? Uh, but people, they say all sorts of things these days. People say, we got to follow Quran and Sunnah only. Well, Umar radiallahu ta'ala, no, he knew Quran and Sunnah better than anybody else. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam personally uh, gave assurance. Wallahu ja'ala al-haqqa ala lisani Umar wa qalbi. Allah has placed haqq on the heart and tongue of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And all the other companions who had the good fortune to be with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See Rasulullah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave, he gave such a wonderful compliment uh, to the people. The Prophet said, لا تمس النار مسلما رآني أو رآم رآني. A Muslim who has seen me, somebody who believed upon Rasulullah, uh, accepted Islam, was blessed by Allah to have the good fortune of seeing Rasulullah with Iman and then remained steadfast upon that Iman and died with the same Iman. Such a person is referred to uh, in Islamic terms as a Sahabi. Uh, and the Prophet wasallam said, such a person will, uh, the fire of Jahannam will never touch such a person or a person who has seen such a person. In the Quran, Allah promises all such people. Allah has promised them all goodness. And in the Sabaqat Lahum Minna Al Husna Ulaika Anha Mubadun. And those who have been promised goodness by Allah, they will be kept far away from Jahannam. Uh, the fire of Jahannam will not come anywhere near them. Uh, so these were all problems. And they started in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well when many people were told to believe like the companions of Rasulullah. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ When people are told to believe like the ones who've already believed. And then in the time of Rasulullah when the Quran was being revealed, who were the believers? Who were the believers in the time when the Quran was coming down? Sahaba. So when Allah says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسُ When people are told to believe like the Sahaba, 
They say, Qalu anu'minu kama amana sufaha. They say, shall we believe like these fools? Na'udhu billah min thalik. You know when children fight in the playground. And this has been mentioned in a hadith as well. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, don't swear at your parents. Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, how can anybody swear at his parents? The Prophet said, don't swear at anybody else's parents. If you swear at somebody else's parents, what will he say? He'll say the same thing about your parents. Children, when they have a fight in the playground and somebody says, you know, your dad's like this, your mother's like this, then what does he do? He says the same thing back. Uh, similarly with Sahaba, Allah so sensitive. So sensitive when he comes to Sahaba. Whatever people say about Sahaba, that is what Allah says about them. Allah could have said anything. But Allah returned their objection with the same words. When these people are told to believe like the believers, like the people, the Sahaba, they say, shall we believe like these fools? Allah says, they are Allah innahum humus sufaha. They are the ones who are real fools. And Hazrat al Sahib often says, uh, whatever you say about Sahaba, what you believe about them is what Allah thinks about you. Those who think Sahaba are fools, Allah says they are fools. And those who say Sahaba Ikram are true believers in the eyes of Allah, they are true believers. And those in Auzu Billah who might think that Sahaba were disbelievers, then in the eyes of Allah they are also disbelievers. Uh, this is a plain, simple, uh, simple solution. And uh, there is no ifs and bits about this. Allah has compared them. Allah has made the Sahaba Ridwanullah the standard of haq. Uh, they are the ones who are following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah gave the responsibility of the completed deen to Sahaba. When deen was being revealed, Allah said, this is my deen. Fi deen Allah. Rasulullah, in kuntum fi shakkim min deeni. If you have any doubt in my deen. And, but when deen was perfected. Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Allah makes reference here. If deen was only what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said and done. Then Allah would have said, today I have perfected your deen. Implying deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah would have used the singular pronoun. Which in Arabic is ka. Al yawma akmaltu laka. Like we say subhanaka. Allahumma wa bihamdika. Wa tabarakasmuka. That ka means yours. But in Arabic... Ka is for singular and for plural is kum. So Allah doesn't say, Al yawma akmaltu laka deenaka. I have perfected your deen implying the deen of Rasulullah only. Allah says, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. I have perfected your deen for you implying the deen of Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi majma'een. Allah gave them the responsibility and honor of taking the deen and whatever they have done is also guidance for us as in the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made clear ma ana alayhi wa ashabi and guidance is the path upon which I am and the, the path of my companions many a people uh, since the beginning almost the first century of Islam uh, many people they decided to make a division between the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sahaba. Later on, there were others, they tried to make a distinction between what the ulama, what the imma mujtahideen. Allah in the Quran in Surah Al-Fatiha, when we say, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, Ya Allah, guide us all to the right path. What is the right path that Allah has defined in this Surah, which we recite, how many times in our lives? Brothers, are you awake or are you asleep? Over almost half a million times or thereabouts, which we recite, 11,000 times a year, 365 days, 32 times every day, 11,000 times a year, 11,000 if a person lives for 50 years praying for Hidayat, 
that makes more than half a million times we ask Allah for Hidayat. Uh, and Allah, what does He define Sirat al Mustaqim as? Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, Sirat al Rasuli. Is that what's in Fatiha? What's in Fatiha? Sirat al Ladina an'amta alayhim. The path of those whom Allah has favored. Those al Ladina in the plural. Allah Himself has defined this in the Quran. And the people who are favored by Allah from amongst the prophets, from amongst the Siddiqeen, Shuhada and Salihin, wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa, and what wonderful companions they are. What wonderful people they are. Yes, in matters which are specific to the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. And who to understand the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam better than initially the Khulfa Rashidin? And from amongst them, Abu Bakr initially and Umar radiallahu anhu, and then the rest of the Khulafa, and then the Sahaba generally, and then Allah blessed this Ummah. One of our Mashaykh, Maulana Idris Kandalwi rahmatullah alayhi, who was one of the Muhaddisin and the Mufassirin of Darul Ulum Deoband. In this time and age, institution Allah has blessed. Allah has blessed and we are sitting here and many parts of the world our respected honorable teacher Hazrat Allama Sahib is also one of those wonderful fragrant flowers of the garden which was planted by that calendar Maulana Muhammad Qasim Nanotwi Rahmatullahi Alayhi on the 15th of Muharram 1866 uh, under one pomegranate tree one student Mahmood Hassan and one teacher Mullah Mahmood under the instruction of Maulana Qasim Nanotwi Rahmatullah Alayhi, not even in a masjid, under a tree in the fourth court of Chattawali Masjid in Deoband. And then from there, mashallah, all these radiant rays spread all over the world. And now, mashallah, thousands upon, not thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of ulama are the fruits of that tree. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Maulana Idris Kandalwi Rahmatullah Alayhi, he was honored, he was blessed, and he learned under one of the grand mashayikh of Darul Ulum Deoband, Maulana Anwar Shah Kashmiri Rahmatullah Alayhi, and then later on when Pakistan was, was, uh, was made, he migrated to Lahore and he was Sheikh al Hadith there for many years. And then eventually, when he passed away, he was Sheikh al Hadith up there. He's written a very wonderful book. On the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entitled Seeratul Mustafa. And at the end of there he's listed some of the miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because many Christians, and they object on the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they say, you see, that even the Quran speaks volumes about the miracles of Jesus. The miracles of Isa alayhi salam, the fact that he would make birds of clay and blow into them and they would become alive. He would power, rub his hand over those born blind and lepers. Allah would cure them. He would go to a dead person and say, Qum Rise in the name of Allah. Allah would make him alive. Yeah. And the Christians, they say, you see, even miracles of Jesus are mentioned in the Quran. Uh, but mention but miracles of your own Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have not been mentioned in the Quran in such manner. Uh, so it shows because the miracles of Jesus were so powerful, so it shows he was a bigger prophet and a bigger man than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you understand the objection? It would leave many people confused. Uh, but you see when we analyze the need of miracles, why did Allah ever give the prophets miracles? In order to convince the people about the existence of Allah, that Allah is there, and the fact that this person has been chosen by Allah, so to convince the people about Allah and about the prophet, that they should accept him and listen to him and obey him. In spite of performing such miracles, according to the Bible at least, when Jesus needed his disciples, not other companions, his chosen honorable disciples, according to the Bible, the Quran speaks volume about the disciples of Jesus as well. Isa alayhi salam. 
Hawani Isa alaihi salam addressed them with qala al-hawariyun nahnu ansarullah initially Isa alaihi salam said man ansari ila Allah who is my helper the hawariyin they said we are the helpers of Allah amanna billah we believe in Allah washhad bi anna muslimun and bear witness we are true believers the quran says they were true believers they were totally committed to helping Isa alaihi salam but the bible says when Jesus needed his disciples the most, they turned their back upon him. And in fact, one of them conspired with the Roman authorities to have Isa salatu wasalam, now arrested and then put on the cross and to be hung, to be crucified. And one of them, one of his close disciples and the, the, the disciple of Jesus, his name was Peter. He is regarded among Christians like Muslims. Uh, we honor and revere Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. No, Peter is supposedly the most honorable disciple of Jesus. Even he turned his back upon Jesus and he rejected him totally. And so he, even having performed such powerful miracles, uh, the Bible says that Jesus was unable to convince and keep his even chosen and selected disciples with him and they all turned his back. But the Prophet wasallam, he didn't need to perform such miracles to convince people. The Prophet wasallam, his personality, his character, his goodness was so clear that in spite of not going around and saying, standing on a qabr and say, rise in the name of Allah. Although the Prophet ﷺ did perform miracles and ulama of Islam have listed miracles of Rasulullah ﷺ to be more than many, many thousands, three thousand or so miracles Rasulullah ﷺ performed. But because his miracles are not written in such manner in the Quran, only a few. So the Christians, they say, you see, your Quran speaks volume about the miracles of Jesus. So Jesus must be a bigger prophet. But they forget and they fail to understand that the prophet's personality was so miraculous. Every word he spoke was miraculous. Every step he took was miraculous. His vision was so miraculous. His hearing was so miraculous. His days were miraculous. His night was miraculous. His ummah is miraculous. And the ulama of this ummah, I was saying, Mawlana Idris Kandalwi rahmatullah has listed the miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then listed the ulama of this ummah to be a tribute to Rasulullah. In no other nation have there been such ulama as the ulama in this ummah. Such imams, imams of hadith, imams of tafsir, imams of language, imams of fiqh. Uh, fiqh is such a special knowledge of deen. Uh, people say, oh, we don't need anything but Quran and Hadith. Hazrat Alama Sahib Ahmad Barakatuhum says, Hadith is a matter of respect, of reverence, teaching and learning, but not for practice. Hadith, hadith is a matter for learning, for reading, for teaching, for respect, uh, but not for practice. The matter for practice is not hadith but sunnah. Every sunnah is hadith but every hadith is not sunnah. It's like every, every Englishman is British but every British man is not English. You can be British and Scottish. You can be British and Welsh. You can be British and Irish. Uh, but every Englishman is British as well. So every Sunnat is also reported in hadith, but every hadith is not sunnat. Uh, the thing for practice is sunnat. This is why sometimes you have zaif hadith, sometimes you have sahih hadith, sometimes you have a modu hadith, which is a fabricated report. Hadith is only a report. Somebody said something. This is why in books of hadith, even Bukhari, you find sayings of Rasulullah, you find sayings of Sahaba, 
and you find sayings of Tabi'een and other subsequent scholars until the time of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, not just sayings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but a sunnah is an established practice. Uh, what the Prophet وسلم, used to do or left his ummah, uh, that's, that's the practice upon which the ummah has been, mashallah, coming down, passing down to our generation today. Ila yawmina hadha. This is the sunnah, the established practice of Rasulullah and the practice which has been described and ascribed for the ummah to follow. Uh, many people they say we only read Quran. And we only need hadith. Who are the imams? Where did the imams come from? Well, the imams are also mentioned in the Quran. Not as imams as such, uh, but the concept. Uh, many people say, uh, but it doesn't mention in the Quran. The Prophet didn't say follow Abu Hanifa or be a Deobandi or be a Hanafi or whatever. What the Quran does command us, Ya Yuhalladina Manu, Atiullaha, wa atiu Rasula, wa ulil amri minkum. Obey Allah, obey his messenger, and obey the people of authority amongst you. People of authority can imply rulers, people of authority also implies the people with the thorough knowledge, understanding of deen. The Quran commands us. Uh, to follow such people. Follow those who turn to me. If you don't know, ask the people with knowledge, with understanding, and the ones who do know what to do. So when the Quran commands us uh, to follow the Ulul Amri Minkum, La Alima Hulladina Yastambetunahu Minhum, those who are bestowed by Allah with the ability to make ijtihad and istimbat especially and that is such a favor of Allah Allah follows this ayat up by saying وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ لَتَّبَعْتُمُ الشَّيْطَانَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا the fact that Allah has commanded us to follow mujtahid scholars those who can make ijtihad and istimbat and this is such a fazl of Allah upon you and his mercy if Allah had not commanded you for this, shaitan, you would have definitely been misled by shaitan, illa qalila, except very little, very few amongst you. And the Mufassirin have stated these few are the Mujtahids themselves. Because the Prophet وسلم, in a hadith has mentioned, Faqihu wahidun ashaddu ala shaitan min alf abidin. Shaitan is after everybody. And in fact, it makes mention in the hadith, shaitan flows in the person's body like blood, and reaching all parts of the body. Allah has given us the whole Quran from Alif Lam Mim, from Ba Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Alif Lam Mim, Zalik Al Kitab, Ula Rayba Fi, until Seen One Nas. Many ahkams, many rulings, many, many issues. Allah has made guidance clear. Allah has revealed the truth. Whosoever wants to believe, let him believe. Those who want to deny, then it's up to them. So people, when they want to believe and follow, what will keep them away? If you ask any Muslim, any Muslim, young or old, brother, do you not want to please Allah? Do you not want to be good? Hands up anybody who doesn't want to be good. Anybody here doesn't want to be good? Hands up those who want to be good. MashaAllah. Everybody wants to be good. Nobody wants to be bad. So what is it which, which leads people astray? Allah has mentioned it in the Quran. Like they say, icing on the cake. When somebody gives advice or somebody does a speech or writes a book, you know the final paragraph? That's the conclusion. That's the cream and the gist of the whole message. Allah is listed in the Quran and then the final thing, like they say, nail in the coffin. What will stop you from following this guidance? This is where the Quran begins. No doubt whatsoever. Every Muslim believes in the Quran. But what's stopping them? From obeying the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we will say Shaitan won't let people. 
Shaitan has sworn in from the presence of Allah to sit on the right path. لَأَقُودَنَّ لَهُمْ سِرَاتَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَانَا إِمَانِهِمْ وَانْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ Then to attack people from the right and the left and the front and the back and not let them walk the right path. Uh, so what does he do? يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ He only incites people. إِنَّ كَيْدَ الشَّيْطَانِ كَانَ ضَعِيفًا Shaitan hasn't got handcuffs and chains with which he holds you down. He can only incite people. Uh, and, and he runs in the body like blood. So people who are the ones most severe upon Shaitan, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَقِيهُ wahid. One such faqih who understands deen properly. And Allah doesn't give fiqh understanding of deen to any in English as they say Tom, Dick and Harry. Uh, Allah gives understanding of deen to only those people Allah wants to honor and bless. Uh, hadith in Bukhari, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ uh, Allah wants to bless someone, Allah gives them understanding of deen. And from these blessed people, people who have such understanding of fiqh isn't one brother, subhanallah, on the YouTube, there is a clip. Brother, fiqh is about cleverness. Someone who's very clever. And they say, he's fiqh. He has fiqh. Fiqh isn't about being clever. Fiqh is about understanding deen in such a manner that that understanding not just restricted to the mind and the tongue, but flows to the heart as well. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا Allah says, Fiqh is understanding of deen which affects and mashallah cements and enlightens the heart of people. And Fiqh is something, understanding of deen. And the Prophet ﷺ in another hadith said, خَسَلَتَانِ لَا يَجْتَمِعَانِ فِي الْمُنَافِقِ There are two, two conditions. They will never unite in a munafiq. One is good character and the other is understanding of deen. And understanding of deen uh, amongst anybody, Allah gives to those whom Allah wants to favor. One grand faqih of this ummah. It is ijma of this ummah that in this ummah the greatest fuqaha were for. Imam Abu Hanifa was the first, then Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahumullah. They were all grand fuqaha of this ummah. And one of these grand fuqaha in Tazkiratul Hufaz, Imam Shamsuddin Dhabi rahimahullah has stated, Imam Shafi once said, Annasu kulluhum ayalu abi hanifa fil fiqh. When it comes to understanding deen, having fiqh of deen, whole humanity are like children in front of Abu Hanifa. Rahimahullah. So in this time, brothers, living times of fitan and fasad, people they say, oh, brother, who's Abu Hanifa? We have to follow Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, we have to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But have we seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Have we seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Did Imam Bukhari see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Did, uh, who, who are the ones who actually saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? People say, brother, you see this Bukhari here, in here looks like it says, Sallu kama raitumuni o salli. You have to pray the way Rasulullah prayed. Rasulullah said, see, pray as you see me pray. So have you seen Rasulullah praying? Did Imam Bukhari see Rasulullah praying? Uh, who are the ones who actually saw Rasulullah praying? Was Sahaba Ridwanullah Ali Majma'een. So Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah and these others. <laughs> Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah and the likes of such, the other fuqaha, in light of hadith, like I was saying, every hadith is not sunnah. Every sunnah is hadith, but every hadith is not sunnah. In light of Quran and hadith, they've derived, made istimbat, and presented for the ummah. Is it simple to follow instructions, which we call fiqh? Uh, there are four main fiqhs, fiqh Hanfi, fiqh Malki, fiqh Shafi, fiqh Hanbali. And alhamdulillah, these are all the fuqaha whom the Ummah has accepted and been following for more than 12 centuries. But like I was saying earlier, 
where when I started, we are living in times of fitan and fasad. And when we, it's not easy for people to remain Muslims and follow the deen properly. All sorts of people making all sorts of claims. Uh, people making claims, uh, targeting Sahaba. People making claims, talking, I'm my mujtahideen. People who are dear to Allah. And these people, mashallah, the fuqaha and the Sahaba, Ridwanullah, Majma'een, Ulamai Kiram, in the Quran and Hadith, Hadith, in, in the Quran, there are two people, two people. Allah has challenged and Allah has declared war with. We are all sinful and weak, nobody's perfect. Uh, but one thing, if Allah wants to forgive anybody, Allah will forgive. Ya ibadi alladin asrafu ala anfusim la taqnatu min rahmatillah, inna allaha yaghfiru dhunuba jamia. Those who've done wrong against themselves, don't despair in the hope of Allah. Allah will forgive all your sins, but don't do anything which will make Allah so angry with someone that Allah will not want to forgive them. There are two people Allah has declared war with. One is in the Quran and one is in Sahih Hadith, reported by Imam Bukhari. The one in the Quran. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَفَعَلُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَذَرُوا مَا بَقِيَ مِنَ الرِّبَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ فَإِنْ لَمْ تَفَعَلُوا فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ If you don't stop dealing in interest, then Allah has declared war. Allah and His Prophet have declared war with such a person. And the other person is in Hadith. Allah says in, the, in, in Hadith Qudsi, Hadith Qudsi is a hadith which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has reported on behalf of Allah that Allah says Man adali walijan faqad adhantuhu bil harb Whosoever has any grudge against any one of my friends I have declared war with them. So if somebody is at war with Allah you think he's got any chance of forgiveness? Allah doesn't let such people anywhere near deen. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah wasn't just a friend of Allah. He was the Imam of Muslimin. And Muslimin, Ummah has been following all these Imams for almost 12, 13 centuries. And as a result of following the Imams, people have become friends of Allah. And when we say we follow these Imams, we don't say we follow them like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we compare Imams, we compare them to Imams. Many a people nowadays, they will target young people like Amir Sah was saying earlier. When people are in pubs and clubs and outside, they don't go and visit them. But when our Tablighi Jamaat brothers especially go to such places and bring youngsters to the masjid, and they say, brother, your prayer isn't like the prayer of Rasulullah. Look, the Prophet prayed like this. Your Imam is saying like this. Who are you going to pray like? Are you going to pray like the Imam or are you going to pray like Rasulullah? What would you say? Obviously, a young ordinary person, a man, he doesn't know what he's talking about and he feels confused. Nobody is going to give preference to Imam Abu Hanifa over Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what he doesn't know, this young simple guy, is this guy is deceiving him. It's like asking someone, brother, where do you live? Do you live in Derby or in England? It's a silly question. You know the guy, he's lost, his screws have gone loose. He's lost the plot, as they say. You ask, brother, where do you live? Derby or Nottingham? Where do you live? London or Manchester? Where do you live? England or Scotland? England or Pakistan? When you're going to compare Imam Abu Hanifa, how silly to compare and foolish to compare Imam Abu Hanifa to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you want to compare Imam Abu Hanifa, then we compare him to Imam Shafi, to Imam Malik, to Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahumullah. And when, we, when people talk about prophets, who are you, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Isa alayhi salam? It's a valid question. Uh, you don't say who you're going to follow, Imam Abu Hanifa or Rasulullah. You know this guy's lost the plot. So next time anybody says this to you, don't be afraid to say, Brother, we are following Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah in order to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah will lead us to Rasulullah, not away from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But because, brothers, we don't sit in the company of ulama, hence... 
we don't learn these things. But when we sit, and Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us. Uh, as our Mirza was saying earlier, Allah commands us in the Quran, Ya Yuladina Manuttakullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen. Fear Allah and join the truthful people. And just as don't be embarrassed and ashamed to say we are Hanafi. And when we say we are Hanafis, that means we follow Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah in controversial issues, ambiguous issues, undefined issues, issues which are clear. There is no difference among ulama. Just as we are Hanafi, similarly, Alhamdulillah, Thumma Alhamdulillah, in this time and age, the way Allah has blessed and honored and favored the ulama of Deoband, this is similarly their honor and their share. Yeah. So next time, any Deobandis, don't be afraid, be proud, Alhamdulillah. Ulama of Deoband, have, they are ulama of Ahlu Sunnah, they are ulama of Haq. Uh, they are the ulama who follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who have inherited the knowledge and the guidance revealed by Allah upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam throughout the ages. And alhamdulillah, when Darul Ulum Deoband was established over 150 years ago, and now its rays have illuminated the world. And the world people in the UK, in Europe, in America, Australia, New Zealand, all over the world. In fact, in most of the masajid of even UK, the imams and aimas are, mashallah, the offshoots of Darul Ulum Deoband. So don't be afraid, Deobandis. Yes, alhamdulillah, we are Deobandis because our elders, ulama, uh, people like Maulana Qasim Nanotwi Rahmatullah Alayhi, Maulana Rashid Ahmad Gangohi Rahmatullah Alayhi, Maulana Ashraf Ali Tanwi Rahmatullah Alayhi, Maulana Anwar Shah Kashmiri Rahmatullah Alayhi, and they were all such great, not just Allahu Akbar mountains, but oceans of knowledge. Allah bless them and each one of them enlightened the lives of millions of people and their legacy continues today. But Alhamdulillah, along with that, one of our our senior scholars of the time, Alhamdulillah, Alama Sahib, through many years, this is one, Alama Sahib says, this is a gist of his 60, 70 years of teaching and learning and teaching hadith and deen. When we say we are, we are Hanafi, for example, and people say, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't say be, follow Abu Hanifa, Rahimahullah, but Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahimahullah, he didn't just formulate things or fabricate things himself. Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah learned from many, many learned people. His main teacher was Hamad bin Abi Sulaiman. Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah in Tazkiratul Hufaz, Imam Shamsuddin Zabi has mentioned he learned hadith from more than 4,000 prominent scholars of the time. 4,000. Amongst them, Atab bin Abi Rabah, Imam Muhammad Baqir in Madinatul Munawwara, one of the descendants of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in Tazkiratul Ufaz is also being listed as amongst the main teachers of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. Uh, Imam Abu Hanifa learned from Hamad bin Abi Sulaiman, who learned from Ibrahim Nakhi, who, who learned from Alqma, who learned from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who learned from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. About Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it makes mention the Prophet himself gave assurance, whatever Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says to you, bear witness, he's telling the truth. In Bukhari, there's a narration by Huzaifa radiallahu anhu, he was asked, who is the man who resembled the Prophet most in conduct and dealings? And Huzaifa radiallahu anhu, another sahabi, he says, Ashbahan nasi dallan wa samtum hadiyan bi rasulillah. The man who resembled the Prophet most in conduct, dealing and affairs was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Uh, so Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, he inherited his, his legacy uh, in Kufa. And mashallah, um, and amongst others, many, many other shuyukh that he learned from. And then the t students that he prepared, Imam Abu Yusuf, Imam Muhammad, Imam Zufar, and others. And another beauty of, the, of Imam Abu Hanifa, Allah's fiqh, is all other aima, their fiqh is their personal, is their personal fiqh. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, like many youngsters, they say nowadays, perhaps Abu Hanifa didn't know this hadith. In the... In the class or in the school of Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah, when he used to teach and discuss issues, there were 40 ulama of the highest rank 
And the most learned people in Baghdad, amongst whom Imam Abu Hanifa would sit and discuss issues, so that all aspects of any issue were thoroughly discussed and then agreed upon. Uh, so the fiqh of Imam Abu Hanifa, unlike other imma, is a shuri fiqh. So all aspects uh, were thoroughly looked into before being accepted and decided. So rest assured that when there is something in Hanafi fiqh, all aspects have been taken into account. But many youngsters, uh, they get fooled into saying, or oh, perhaps Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah didn't know, a person who learned from 4,000 shuyukh and issues were discussed in meetings and in discussions before being accepted, how could any aspect have missed out? Allah. Uh, so don't be fooled into these things. Don't be embarrassed to declare yourself. When we say we are Deobandis, it doesn't mean we are another sect. Our ulama of Deoband are the ulama of Ahlu Sunnah, ulama of Haq, just as Fiqh Hanfi is Haq. Uh, like all other, all other fiqhs of Imam Shaf, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, we acknowledge them as well, but we acknowledge that Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimahullah's fiqh is also one of the parts of Haq. May Allah Rabbul Alameen save us and guide us all to the right path. In this, in this brother, Alhamdulillah, Masab has listed many of the students, uh, the, the mashaykh of, uh, amongst the Sahaba, Tabi'eens, leading up to Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, and also his students as well. And so inshallah brothers take this and as well as as he has, it has listed the uh, brief introduction to Deoband as well, as well as many of the common issues which people need to be aware of. So alhamdulillah this chart has been prepared took many years to prepare this, alhamdulillah, like, like I said earlier, Allah Sahib has stated this is the gist of his lifetime uh, teaching and learning and alhamdulillah having been prepared in this chart, it's been laminated as well, so you take it, you read it, you put it up in your masjids, so that everybody, if you understand these issues inshallah, then anybody tries to mislead you or confuse you, he will not be able to do so, inshallah. So safeguard yourselves and other youngsters, inshallah, by studying this chart. And if you can, if you can, try and study this chart uh, from among from the imams or the ulama of your masjid, and they will be able to explain and teach it to you thoroughly, and so that they can dissolve it properly so that it goes down. Uh, sometimes the person eats and he doesn't digest it properly. Uh, so you need to digest this and inshallah some of the proper, the most common issues like Rafa Yadain, Amin loudly and so on have also been discussed in this chart. So please, it's only five pounds and inshallah this is like a lifetime investment to save yourself from these attacks. Uh, to save your Iman, to save your Deen so that you can continue inshallah uh, being on the right path. May Allah protect us and guide us all to the right path so that we can all live like Muslims, die like Muslims and rise like Muslims on the day of